Are you trying to figure out how to prevent identity theft? Good, you should be. According to Pew Research, over one in three Americans fell victim to an identity breach in 2023. But if you want to protect yourself online, I know it can feel overwhelming. In fact, a lot of people tell me that they're not even sure where to start. This is especially true because a lot of the advice out there, it's just overly complicated. It's created by security experts, geeks like me, who think of extreme outliers and try to prepare for those. You just want to get the big stuff done. You just want to make sure that you have the foundational security measures in place to keep you and your family safe. So that's why I made this video. Now, there's only so much information that I can fit into this short video. And so what I wanted to do for everybody watching this is put together a living, breathing document that I'm updating constantly that continues basically a very short checklist to everything I'm mentioning in this video, along with expanded detail on each of those points. So if you want to say, for instance, freeze your credit, I wanted the three bureaus, I got a video for you on just that. And then I've got links to the forms where you can complete that credit freeze or the phone numbers if you just want to give them a call. So way more information here than I could possibly fit into the video. Make sure that you claim a copy of this resource by clicking the links in the video description down below. See you there. So in order to prevent identity theft and keep yourself safe online, we're gonna start with the highest impact activities. And the first, it's this, freeze or lock your credit. You're gonna to wanna to do this at each of the three major bureaus as Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. And it's very easy to do. Now, it does take a bit of time, probably 10 to 20 minutes on average per bureau, but it is well worth it. You can choose to call the bureaus or you can do it online at the URLs provided below. I should also note that some identity theft protection services make this especially easy with a one-click credit lock feature like you see on the screen here. But keep in mind that no one service currently offers a one-click credit lock at each of the three bureaus. That was a mouthful. So why are we doing this? The reason is that the most common type of identity theft is somebody taking out loans in your name. If your credit files are frozen or locked, it's going to be that much harder for the thief to do this. This is also why credit monitoring is so important. You want to be sure that you're checking your credit score on a regular basis for signs that something might be amiss. You can do that for free here or as part of a paid service like one of these. Personally, I use and recommend Aura. Links to both resources sources, including discounts, are available in the video description below. Next up, you're going to use the password manager to create and save all of your passwords, and you're going to fortify them with 2FA or two-factor authentication. At a minimum, you want your passwords to be 16 characters long and use a mix of numbers, symbols, upper and lowercase letters. Also keep in mind that it doesn't matter how long your password is, if you're reusing it on a regular basis, eventually it's going to show up in a data breach, and then you're going to be vulnerable to something called credential stuffing. So never reuse your password. And because you're using a secure password manager, you're never going to be tempted to reuse passwords. My personal favorites would be OnePass, Bitwarden, and Dashlane. You can't go wrong with any of these three, you can go very wrong if you use LastPass, so avoid LastPass at all costs. They have a long history of data breaches, and in my opinion, they have handled them very unprofessionally, and I just don't trust the company, and I don't think you should either. And of course, make sure that you are using a strong password for your password manager along with two-factor authentication. Basically, 2FA is a security method that requires you to input not just a password, but also a second form of verification, usually a six or eight-digit PIN. If you want the absolute highest level of security, use a YubiKey. If you don't want the security, and admittedly, the bit of extra inconvenience that comes with using hardware based 2FA, consider that biometric based passkeys are a good alternative. The third best option for you is going to be using software based 2FA. So these are things like Google Authenticator, Authy, Aegis. These are generally secure, but not as secure as a hardware key. And the worst form of 2FA is text message 2FA. Text message based 2FA leaves you vulnerable to a practice called SIM swapping. So I recommend you avoid it. But unfortunately, a lot of us can't. A lot of banks actually only have text message 2FA available. Now, text based 2FA, it is better than nothing, but avoid it whenever possible. And yeah, I know 2FA can feel tedious. Trust me, I just spent the past weekend setting up Yubi keys for all my accounts. But you know what else is tedious? Getting hacked and losing access to all your accounts. It's probably a good time for me to reference that saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Is that what it is? All right. Next up, we're going to protect your bank account. So hopefully by now you already have 2FA set up with your bank. There are three additional steps that you want to take with your bank or banks. The first thing I want you to do is set up a verbal password. This is a password that you must speak over the phone before you gain access to your accounts. It is not your banking password. It's separate. Next up, I want you to use a completely separate email for all of your banking needs needs. And ideally, you also use a separate phone number that is linked only to your bank accounts. It's not available or in use anywhere else in your life. Lastly, make sure that you're not using real answers to your account security questions. We do this because most security questions are pretty easy to guess. What year did you graduate high school? Make and model your first car. This is all information that people close to you or maybe even complete strangers could be able to obtain on the internet. So this is why using gibberish answers is going to be a best practice that I'd like you to start incorporating today. And lastly, with banking, pay with credit, not debit. Credit charges are just easier to reverse if they turn out to be fraudulent. 
schedule. Your next step to protecting yourself online and preventing identity theft is this. Be very skeptical of incoming communications. Whether it's a phone call, an email, even physical mail, be very skeptical. The last thing we want is for you to get fished. And unfortunately, there's a huge, insane variety of phishing scams out there that we all need to be vigilant about. And the first step is simply adopting a skeptical attitude whenever somebody purporting to be PayPal, Amazon, maybe your bank reaches out to you. So how do you avoid getting fished? You practice this one simple security technique. Anytime you receive an incoming communication from an institution of any sort, don't respond directly to it. Let's say your bank calls you and they alert you to fraudulent activity on your account. They need you to do something and they need you to do it right now. There's a strong sense of time urgency. Ignore the call, hang up and call your bank back at the number listed on the back of your credit or debit card or at the number listed directly on their website. Same goes for emails. There's no reason you ever need to click a link in an email purporting to be from paypal.com. If PayPal has a message for you, it will be there at paypal.com. The next thing we're going to do is protect your PII or personal identifying information. To do this, we're going to start where many great stories start and that's with a Google search. So go ahead, go to Google, put your name in plus maybe your city name or your address and just see what comes up. Most people do this for the first time. They're shocked at how much information there is about them available on the open web. Let's start reducing that. First, get in the habit of publishing on social media selectively. This means you don't geotag your posts in real time. You don't broadcast travel plans in advance and you do set your social media profiles to private. Don't include PII in your usernames themselves. So don't have your birth or your full name, including a middle name, stuff like that. Keep your handles quite vague in description so that they're not linked to your real world identity. Okay, so now depending on the extent of the information that you found about yourself that's out there, you might consider a service like Delete Me, Incogni, even Aura, they offer data broker opt-out services. Essentially what these services do is they periodically submit opt-out requests to websites that are publishing your personal information. And usually those websites take that info down. Now we're gonna protect your physical devices. So your phone, any tablets, your laptop. First, understand that no antivirus, no VPN is going to protect you if somebody gains access to your unlocked device. So make sure you're locking your phone with a complex pin, ideally a biometric one, and be very careful who you give access to your unlocked phone to. Okay, with that out of the way, yes, I definitely recommend you use an antivirus even if you're on a Mac. Bitware and Malwarebytes are my two preferred antivirus. 